Yeah, my name is uh, Wilson Huda, and I'm uh, originally from the Eastern Cape. And I say originally because people are saying I've got a accent uh, that's a little bit from Cape. I grew up all my life in Cape Town, and um, but all my family still lives in Eastern Cape, Jeffreys Bay, and Lumos Door. Um, I'm married with uh, Grace Huda, and she's from uh, Namibia, a beautiful country. And uh, we together have two children. Michael Andrew, he's 16 years old, was born in Cape Town. And then Arawa, Alana, she was born in New Zealand. And uh, just a beautiful, she got a Maori name, uh, which means Aroha, uh, affectionate love. Um, I've been asked to, by many people all over the world, to sort of put my testimony together. Um, I've shared in different places. 67 different countries, my story and people has always come back and said, why don't you put it on a video? So this is the first attempt that we're trying to put it together for you so that many, many people can be blessed, I hope, um, like many has been. So um, I am so grateful for this opportunity to, to visit you in your house or wherever you are and just share what God has been doing in my own life and um, just as you're going to hear uh, my story as it unfold. My mother was 16 years old when she fell pregnant with me. Now you might be thinking it's young, and she was young, uh, but it was one of those one night stands. They came together in the dark um, behind the house on a Saturday evening, and uh, one thing led to another. And I don't have to tell you that um, they had sex, uh, two months later, my mother found out that she was pregnant, um, carrying this baby that was unplanned. And um, her father, my grandfather, he was a very strict man, a lay preacher, very respected in the community that we grew up. And so um, when she found out that she was pregnant, she went to my father and uh, told him that she was pregnant. And when my father heard the story, he ran away. And uh, up to this day, I've never met my father. I know he was from the tribe of Mandela, Tulsa, I mean, my mother was colored, so I have the mixed blood of two races in South Africa running through me. And so when, when my mother realized that my father ran away, she was petrified, very afraid to go and tell him that she was pregnant. And so my mother decided to commit abortion or suicide. And so she went onto the roof of our house and she jumped three times from the roof, wanting to commit suicide. And I don't have to tell you here today that uh, my life is a miracle. God protected me uh, because he knew that you had to listen to the story. Um, now, doctors will, will tell you at a certain stage in the womb of the mother, the child begins to pick up and can hear and, and feel. And how God has made the family is that our parents are supposed to help us to understand and point out who God is and love us and, and create that security. So I was aware, even long before I was born, the very person that was supposed to protect me um, wanted to, to kill me. And, um, and I remember when I was born, I never wanted to live. And I was extremely born with inferiority. I would hide underneath the bed when people would come and visit us in our house. And people would look for us all over for me. But I was actually hiding underneath the bed. I couldn't look people in the eye. I was so ashamed. I was so inferior. Um, after I was born, my mother had to go and work. And she was just this young teenager. She worked as a domestic worker. Um, and so I would occasionally see her every two months when she comes home um, uh, and I, I have fond memories those a few times that I saw her she would come home with some sweets and it was just a wonderful celebration that day and so I grew up most of my time and my life with my grandmother and my grandfather and so my mother um, had to go and work I remember, I uh, also grew up uh, during, um, you know, apartheid, as we all know it. Um, we had to walk for kilometers far to go to school in the morning. So we would wake up in the morning at four, make fire. Uh, we were a very typical poor family. Uh, we stayed in a mud house. 
we would make fire in the morning at about four o'clock, get ready for school, and then we, the journey will start. And there's some incidents along the way that I still remember that has shaped my life greatly and who I am today. And, and one of those incidents is I went to school when I was pretty young. I was five years old when I went to school and it was still accepted. And I remember this one particular morning. It was so cold. Um, I had to put my feet in the cow manure on my way to school. Remember my, my, my school bags was just in this little plastic bag. It used to be tip top supermarket. And, um, and as I was walking to school this particular morning, I saw the school bus and it was the white owner school bus. And I knew that um, we were not allowed as black to, to get a lift with the bus. But this particular morning, it was so cold and it was freezing and I was holding my little shirt and, and as all these white kids with their blazers and beautiful shoes and suitcases, as they got into the, the bus, I stopped there and I looked at the bus driver and of course we were forced to say bus to the white people and, uh, and I remember I stopped and I looked at him and, and I said to him, bus, uh, which means boss, can I have a lift? And he looked at me without saying a word and he slammed the door in my face and he drove away. And I remember walking to school and I begin to think, uh, we were the same age like all the school kids and, you know, uh, but why, why didn't he give me a lift? And I came to the conclusion that it was because I was, I was black. And I remember that day I didn't play uh, at school and when the school was finished, I went and sat behind our house and, and I started to miss my father and I started to think, um, why did God make me black? Um, and, and so the, the, the whole roots, and the seed of bitterness at the age of five years old and unforgiveness began to take place in my, in my life. And I began to think, but how, why is God so unfair? And why did he make me black? And I think uh, if I look back in my life, that's where I think um, my whole life sort of started to change. Um, we didn't play anymore with the, with the kids on, on the farm. And so this is where my journey really started to, and the awareness of my father and what was around me started to happen. Um, and I remember that day as I was beginning to think, I started to miss my father very intensely in my life. And not long after that, I remember that we had um, some of the Dutch form people coming to our house. All our family has been in the Dutch form uh, um, 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 church. And I was just turning about seven when this incident happened. And I remember that evening um, they came to our house and they had a what we would call the cell church um, and, 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 and one of the elders were preaching this evening and, and he was reading out of the book of Matthew where he says if your earthly father knows how to do good how much more your heavenly father if you ask for a fish he will not give you a snake and, and he begins to explain how God loves I, I, I had conflict in my mind because I didn't like God because he has made me black and, and you know, um, just my experience was if you're not white then um, there was something wrong with you. But this evening specifically, I, I just missed my father so much and I thought, man, I am going to give um, God a chance in my life. And as he made an altar call that evening, I remember turning seven, I put up my hand and uh, I remember I prayed the sinner's prayer and, um, and I accept Jesus in my life. Remember that evening as I went to bed, nothing major has happened. I just felt this warm feeling inside of me as I went to bed and sleep that evening. And it was the first time at the age of turning seven that I gave my life to Jesus. <laughs>